it's Deborah Atkinson, host of the Flipping 50 Show and the Flipping 50 Podcast. And I'm here to address the elephant in the room. So I want to show you how I make a super quick, super nutritious smoothie that's going to help me keep lean and help me increase metabolism, which helps burn fat in the long run with my Nutribullet. But before I show you that, I've got to overcome the elephant in the room. So I do a 28 day kickstart and literally for four weeks, I ask women in the group to flip their usual breakfast for a smoothie. Some of them are lucky enough to win a Nutribullet and make that an easier task. But the reason I'm asking that is because it gives them one simple place right here to put two servings of vegetables, to put a serving of fruit, to put a serving of protein, high protein, to put a serving of fat one way or another, fiber, and all of the things that are gonna help them, number one, fend off fat, burn more fat, keep themselves satisfied, and do it in a delicious way. But here's the truth, literally this morning, toward the end, someone gets a complimentary call with me and she said, I hate them. <laughs> so for four weeks, she's been doing what she needed to do, hating it every day. So we talked a little bit about how we can overcome that and that's what I wanna share with you. How to build a smoothie that you actually will love. So let's talk first of all about where we start. So we're gonna put greens here and there are options. So spinach is an easy option and it's got a really mild taste. You're not really gonna taste it. You're gonna see the green. So if you're somebody who hasn't totally bonded with vegetables even yet, that may be something you have to get over, a stigma, but it's not gonna be the taste. It'll take on the taste of almost whatever else you take in. So think about spinach as your back drop, but you can't have that every single time because even spinach, that most powerful, highest nutrient dense food in the world, actually has some things in it, oxalates, that we need to give our body a break from because it can prevent the absorption of some other things. So you want to alternate that with, say this, this is a super greens. So what's in here? You've got a mix of different vegetables, so some chard, a little bit of spinach, a little bit of kale, some baby lettuces, and then there are other options. So you'll actually find some baby lettuces that you could use. You could also use romaine lettuce. Now that's gonna be on the sweeter side. And so if you're really sensitive, your taste buds are really sensitive to a bitter taste at all, you might want to kind of wean yourself in with a little bit of spinach and a little bit of romaine. And then some days just romaine. Some days try the microgreens, try something else. So I'm gonna start today. We're gonna go as mild as possible, all right? So if I were building one for my client, and let's just say her name was Paula. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is power this in. So I've got plenty of grains, mild grains, all right? So if that's you, that's where we're gonna start. Now, Let's talk about berries. So we always opt, if possible, we go with low sugar berries. But let's say you need something to offset a little bit bitter taste. Kale is gonna probably have the strongest taste. So on a day when you add kale, you may wanna opt for strawberries. They are a little sweeter fruit than say blueberries, okay? If you go with any berries, they're gonna be a little less high in sugar and a little less sweet than say cherries. So today, here's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning out their freezer a little bit. So I don't have enough cherries in here to make a full serving. So I'm gonna start with that. I have mixed berries. Now in here I've got strawberries, blueberries, and cherries with kale. Now there's, let's just be honest, there's not a lot of kale in here. There's a little bit of kale in there, but you're probably not going to notice because again, even the packaging, they're smart enough to know they need to put kale with some berries to sweeten it up. Now here's another alternative. Typically I don't say use mango or pineapple 
because it's higher in sugar. But if that's what it takes to get some greens in you, it's a little bit like feeding your kids or yourself vegetables with dip. Is it a good compromise? Probably so. Let's get them in there. And then gradually, just pay attention, all right? So I put in five chunks of mango today. Maybe tomorrow, if I'm gonna do that again, I'll put in four chunks of mango. Your taste buds can change. So I'm gonna put in a little fat. Now fat, I'm gonna choose either chia seeds usually, or I'm gonna choose avocado. Neither one of those is gonna add any flavor, but if you want a little bit more overpowering flavor to help get rid of the kale, or even if you feel like you're tasting the spinach, you swear that you are, try some sun butter or try almond butter. So those are gonna help give you definitely a peanut butter. Now if I were gonna do that, I would probably make sure I was doing chocolate and we're gonna talk about that, okay? So I could use natural chocolate or I could choose vanilla, either one of those. I'm gonna look at my Girls Gone Paleo. You can do Plant Powered Girl, which is a pea-based protein. Any of those are great options. Whey protein if you tolerate dairy, but the choice really is probably wanna go with a vanilla or a chocolate as opposed to a non-flavored, just to help again get rid of that bitter taste. So you've gotta find one you like the flavor of. So I'm gonna do chocolate because it's a stronger taste. And I like vanilla because it's very versatile and I can do a lot of things with it. In fact, I'll stir it in and you know you've heard me talk about stirring that into say a butternut squash soup for a really quick in a pinch. I need something for lunch, but I wanna heat up one thing and I don't have a ton of time. So I will do that and you can do that with vanilla, but you can't really, well I suppose you could, but I don't do that with chocolate. So I'm gonna put that in there and if I want to really strengthen the chocolate, put some cacao powder in. So another way to help you get over the bitter taste of greens, if you're tasting them, is just to, if you like the way I measure, put a little in. So that was um, you know, a little more than a pinch and and then I'm good to go. Now, last but not least, stevia. So one of the things that Paula said today is she doesn't really like the taste of stevia and that after bite. And I suggested to her that if she's only tried one brand that she keep trying. So these are two of my favorites. And up here tucked back in the back of the cupboard somewhere, are one or two other brands that I have tried and didn't like for the same reason. They have a bitter after type taste, but every brand is a little different. So I like Sweet Leaf, and no, I'm not affiliated, so that's a liquid, which I find really easy to add to coffee, you know, for a sweetener in the morning, or Stevita, and that's a little bit more, whoops, powdery, kind of like uh, you could mix this like Nestle's Quick when you were growing up into milk if you wanted to for a little chocolate milk or to flavor a latte for instance. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of that. Now that ought to take care of the pickiest of taste buds. So it's gonna be fairly sweet, but the sweetest come from natural sources. We still have all of the good stuff in there. And then I'm gonna always add an unsweetened milk. So I don't wanna get my sugar from here. I've got an almond coconut blend right now. And I vary brands. In fact, I kind of rotate based on what's on sale, what's easiest to grab a hold of. And I'm just gonna pour this up to the fill line, being careful. And then I'm gonna wrap that all up. And I'll give you the taste face test so that you'll know exactly what it tastes like. Now, I don't have a too sensitive taste bud tongue, but remember this, even if you do, your taste buds turn over in about 11 days. So the other thing I would say to you, or to Paula, if she were still having some trouble with taste, is think about what you might be doing the rest of the day. Are you getting in sugar any other time of day so that you're kind of keeping your tongue wanting that sugary taste so that 
this or something not quite as good as this might actually taste bitter to you. So be ready. spinach leaf on the top that doesn't want to shake it out. I went to school with that lettuce leaf, I think. Okay, so the taste test. Mmm. Okay, so for me, not so finicky. This is almost too sweet. So another little tip, one last thing. Remember that adding a little bit of cinnamon might also help. So keep that in mind. Cinnamon, chocolate, and cherry. Great combination. So figure out a way to how could I offset if there's a bitter taste. What else might help not enhance it but actually cover it or complement it while you're letting your taste buds change? Drop your questions down below because I'd love to hear if you love the idea of a smoothie because of all the goodness that you get in here and the fact you now have a go cup, right? To go start your day or whatever else is next. But if you're struggling with finding flavors, what I like to do is make this taste practically like a chocolate shake. So it's a delicious way to get a nutritious breakfast, but it also feels like I've just treated myself, not deprived myself. That's the best way to go about your nutrition. And that will keep you from feeling like you deserve a payback later. All right, let me know how you do, and I'll see you on the flip side.